one of the things I loved most about being an ambassador was in the morning sitting down with some people who were much brighter than I am, uh, who could fill me in about what's going on in the world and help me better understand the issues that are down the road, uh, and, and being able to peek into the future a bit. And I thought, I'm going to miss that. Uh, and settling in Silicon Valley actually proved to be a very good choice for me because I'm getting the same thing. Now it's technologists sitting down with me in the morning and sort of explaining what they're working on and where the fall lines are and, and suggesting ways that I can help them move into the Asia Pacific. I do think that the rebalance to Asia and using Australia as sort of a, um, a, a, a key partner, you know, relying on Australia's advice, but also understanding that Australia itself should be a focal point for any rebalance effort was probably the the single most important um, piece of work that we did. And that was a rebalance across every dimension. It was a diplomatic rebalance, it was an economic rebalance, and of course it was a security rebalance as well. People always want to talk about the security rebalance uh, as though that's really the point. Um, it's not. The, the rebalance is, was holistic. Uh, it was a recognition that uh, we were overweighted in parts of the world um, where we didn't need to, to be there with such, um, with such great presence and where the payoff benefits opportunities uh, were diminishing or had flattened out. Uh, and that Asia was really the place we ought to be in, in every aspect of American life. Um, so we focused a great deal on trade. Uh, we, we nearly doubled exports to, um, to Australia during the time that I was here and by the time I left we had one of the most impressive um, bilateral investment portfolios in the world. Every trade agreement um, gets the same sense of um, fear, anxiety, pessimism um, as you get to the end because the hard issues are always at the end. Uh, that's how these agreements are negotiated. You find areas of quick consensus early, um, medium consensus later, and then the really hard issues can see until the end when there's so much investment that all sides know that they've got to find a way to get across the, the line. Um, the U.S. has never rejected a uh, free trade agreement um, in our Senate. People keep saying, you know, well, the Senate will never approve this. They've said that about every other free trade agreement, whether it was NAFTA or CAFTA or the recent Korea Free Trade Agreement. Um, we try to negotiate agreements in a way that will um, take, uh, that, that will recognize the concerns that members of the Senate have uh, and give us the greatest possible opportunity to get this ratified by the Senate. I think in terms of the diplomatic piece of it, you know, people forget all the work we did during those four years. And we signed the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation so that we could be a full-fledged member of um, of ASEAN, we uh, uh, became actively involved in the East Asia Summit uh, at, the, at the leaders level and had the president coming out here for the East Asia Summit. We joined the IOR ARC uh, and we um, strengthened you know, trilateral relationships throughout the region, did a lot more exercises together um, on human humanitarian assistance, disaster relief. All these pieces were part of stitching together this region and making us all more integrated and getting to know each other better, but also improving the quality of life for, um, for, for people here. And, and Australia was a critical piece in every one of those dimensions.